So hello and welcome to this special episode. It was supposed to be broadcast on the 29th, but because of technical issues with the sound, it didn't happen. So if you like trucks, check out my other channel, and if you like diecast models, check out my new channel. This channel is returning in April. The writing you can see there, that's my other channels, but two of them are not fully operational yet. So let's get on with the video and the sneak preview of what's coming up. Hughes 500. <laughs> Bang Hugh H1 Hughes. Cockpit. Urel. Blitz. 37mm anti-tank gun. OY. 20mm flat gun. V3000S. Rio. Mutt. I actually know the guy who's got the prototype. And Dodge. Okay, well that is a look at some of the videos that will be coming up this year. Um, you know how much I am in to my trucks of war, of course, if you've seen my Leyland Retriever video. So this year we have a few new things coming up on the channel. These are new series. Number one, we're going to try and do live videos when we're at vehicle shows. I don't know how long they can actually last. But I'm going to try and do one of them. Never done one before. We are also going to do a series of short videos. So these are around 15 to 20 seconds long. And we're also going to do a new series called Aircraft Stories. One to do with British classic cars. Because the, it is the Austin 7's 100th birthday this year. July the 1st. I know two people who owns them so hopefully i can get down to uh, the place of business and film some good content for you we're also planning to do and i don't know when this series is coming out so these were lifeboats from 1971 and they were called and i hope i pronounced this correctly so they were called the arum class so anyway th where are these lifeboats now well unfortunately the information that i've got is a decade out of date but it's better than nothing so quite a few went to the Icelandic search and rescue one went to New Zealand as a dive boat one is currently in Hollyhead that you can rent for fishing trips and I've actually seen that vessel and surprisingly it is to me anyway a good few was actually bought by the Chinese and they were for maritime search and rescue and salvage work and they are still painted orange if you are a private individual this is what it looks like to me you have to paint the boat white so you cannot have it orange anymore and to be honest that does make sense okay so this is the part of the video where i talk about my own videos so, as it's just over a year since we started the channel, but ironically, I didn't put the first video on, apart from two test videos, till the 10th of May. And that one was, of course, the Lanchester Armoured Car. The Tank Museum does a splendid job. Of course, David Fletcher talks about this armoured car. And he does a splendid job. So that is a short history of that one. That was my very first video. So the second video was the SS Jaguar 100. Which is one of my all time favourite cars. That has got the views it deserves. And I think it was a very well edited video. I got as much information as I could. Absolutely love that video. So the third video was the KI-27. And I think a lot of people watch that because they think it's a game. Well, it actually is. IL-2 Sturmvik 1946. And that game is from 2011. It's one of them games you cannot stop playing. Um, I did a vehicle history about this aircraft because I am fascinated with it. It's a small fighter. They were used mainly in China, and after mid-1938, they were withdrawn from service to the training role. So, of course, they never saw action 
in World War II. How they would have performed, it does make me wonder. Where so the fourth video was the LG 3000. That was really good, and if you've seen it, of course it's um, Indiana Jones because there was four used in the movie. They were all replicas. And it was a good video to do. You know what I'm like about World War II trucks. So pretty happy. It took me probably seven hours to edit that video. It was a long video. So to episode five, we have the Shah B1. So this one was my first video that I would say I edited well. I actually edited it on June the 10th and that wasn't a weekend. But I just felt compelled to do a video about this heavy tank. So if you haven't watched the video, and I see only 85 people have, and I think the reason is is because we've got three other tank videos. So when you scroll down, of course, you see one of these videos before that. So more than likely, there's only 84 people who have actually scrolled down enough and seen the video. So anyway, these tanks are quite fascinating. They were very primitive inside, they were extremely uncomfy by the looks of it, and the 37mm anti-tank gun that you saw earlier, them shells just bounced off this tank. So the Germans had the idea, why not use the 88mm flat gun and turn it into an anti-tank gun? Well they certainly did, but it would only penetrate the armour on this tank at close range. The annoying thing about this tank for its crew is the main gun was obviously situated within the hull, so the driver had to turn the tank every time they wanted to fire it if the target wasn't in front of them. So the 88mm shells would penetrate this, but as I say, as long as they were in close range. All other anti-tank weapons on the German side at that time couldn't do anything against this and I think and somebody will probably pull me up in the comments for this one but I think Charles de Gaulle commanded a regiment of these but then you're gonna say in the comments read upon your history Andy it wasn't these it was the Renault type 35 but anyway <clears throat> there we are so the sixth video I don't know why I've got that video on but obviously it was coming to the start of season two so I thought I'd tell you but that's not the best video. Um, so anyway, the next video, episode one of series two. What can I say? I am blown away by this. Can you just tell me in the comments why you like this video so much? Is it because you see a Lockheed Hudson in colour from 1942 as its thumbnail? Or do you just love it because you're into American aircraft? So on this video, we have over 19,000 views. We have over 350 likes and we have around 85 comments. And so many people have taught me things about the Hudson. And of course, I've taught them quite a few things about it as well. And that's what this channel is about, to educate people about. And I'm going to get pulled up in the comments on that. To do with a certain German float plane. Let's put it that way. Um, to educate people how fascinating these vehicles are because we know that we have the young who watch these videos who comment who are fascinated I've never seen anything like this and then we have the old who comment who are great people because they have the stories to tell and I absolutely love chatting to elderly people because of their stories and then you'll have the people who are middle age you'll say oh my uncle served in the war this is a Humber armoured car or as a motorcycle messenger in France, and fascinating stories. I really wish I had a story um, like that. I know, because of my second uncle went on Ancestry.co.uk, he actually said that one of our, one of them served in World War One as infantry. I have no idea what regiment. I'm guessing it was the Lancashire Fusiliers, Pals Battalions. And the second chap served in the war. What he did, I have no idea. I would hope that he drove trucks for the RASC. Because as you know, 
I'm very enthusiastic about that and they're in my opinion obviously your opinion is probably different but in my opinion they were the guys who were the real heroes and of course along with the tanks and the infantry yes they won us the war but of course if it wasn't for them driving these trucks sometimes under fire and terrible conditions then of course the troops wouldn't have got what they wanted but that's another story so episode 2 series 2 austin healy 3000 great editation again fantastic the way the video is edited um i actually put some racing clips in and i believe this guy in australia he's 84 and he is still racing so anyway um i was looking through a car book one day and i saw it and i was like well i've been in love with the healy for many years if there was one car i could own it would be a 3000 i mean i love the mgb gt and that is more in my price range but at the end of the day a austin healy 3000 what a good looking car probably the best looking british car of them all again comments below so episode 3 series 2 the dh2 that was one of the worst videos that i've made probably my third worst video i was having a bit of women trouble on that uh, week and i just felt like i had to take my mind off it do a video it was a bit short that i wish i'd have found out a lot more information because it is one of my all-time favorite aircraft what a shape how weird it looks so episode 4 series 2 ferrari f40 this is my favorite car of all time and i'm sure most people's dream car i unfortunately don't have any friends who own one of them this was the worst video i've done the other thing as well if you look on the channel at certain videos shall we say lockheed hudson the german float plane the f40 to name a few and the yak 42 there's other vehicle history channels that have done them and done them gone very much in depth done longer videos and you know why not if they've got a video on there and they've researched it for a long time leave it to them that's totally fine so one of my favorite videos and i see that 90 people have watched it for episode 5 of series 2 paddle steamers at dunkirk well what can i say if you've actually seen the newsreel footage of dunkirk and i'm positive quite a few of you have then you will see and i am trying to describe this and i'm sure you'll have the picture in your mind so it's on the bow of a paddle steamer and the troops are wading out to the vessel the camera pans around and then you've got the gun crew and that's probably the most famous footage of Dunkirk. Well, that and the photography was all shot by one man. And he didn't get the recognition, or should I say the credit for it, that he deserved. He was killed in 1943. And if my memory serves me correctly, he was born in Liverpool. And that man is called John Rutherford Crosby. I actually have a really good book from 1995 to do with paddle steamers at war. That's only one of two books that I've got on it. So quite a lot of information for that video was taken from the book as I don't really have any other sources of information on paddle steamers and I don't know much about them. But it is a fascinating video that there's a lot packed into it and so much that you will learn. If you do like old ships, if you do like paddle steamers, definitely go and watch it. It's an interesting video. Okay, so the next video, I'm not even going to attempt to say the name of this video. It's a German float plane, a very small float plane, and the engine falls off. And that bit I have included in the video. So it's got 13,000 views, quite a few comments, and most of the comments are about how I pronounce the name i'm not german i'm english and if i cannot pronounce a german aircraft's name then i can't help it that's just how it is i do have mild dyslexia um and certain words are very hard to say but i did get an offer in the comments from a german to teach me german so 
we'll see. I might take him up on that offer. So the next video, this is kind of a, a little bit odd because it wasn't, it was taken from another one of my channels, but I don't believe I did a voiceover. It's five months ago. So if, if you watch it and if I did do a voiceover, then uh, tell me in the comments, Andy, you did a voiceover. There's some very cool police cars in there. I really like the, I think it's a Highway Patrol one from Ohio, about 1936. It's dark blue in the snow. Really like that one. A bit of an odd video in my opinion, but it is to do with classic vehicles, so I thought I'd add it on the channel. So the next video is the MG TA 1936. And what can I say? The Yanks after the war loved this car so much they took it back to America with them and it was a sporting little thing unfortunately I don't know anyone who owns one I would love a drive of one of them it's my favorite MG of all time and I just had to do a video on it also and just before I forget going back to the Hudson video quick that video it's on four minutes and 33 seconds but that actually took me almost six hours to make so these videos even though you watch them in two three minutes they take a lot of effort and so much time to do but then if that's what i enjoy doing why not so the he 59 that is a unique float plane in my opinion the germans use them for rc rescue they're from around 1935-36 but the British, they actually thought that they were being used as reconnaissance aircraft, even with Red Crosses on them. And I don't believe there was. There's no um, record or information that backs that up that I've seen. And I've read quite a few articles on this aircraft. Because we thought that it was um, doing recon missions, we shot them down even with Red Crosses on. Now, of course, that is against the Geneva Convention. And that picture was taken on Deal Beach in July of 1940. That's the first one that was shot down. So quite a fascinating video, that. So, Episode 5, Series 3, The Valentine. Well, it's actually got a fascinating history in itself, as in the name. And if you watch that video, especially on Valentine's Day, uh, <laughs> then you'll know why. It's called that. Fascinating name. And, well, it's one of my all-time favourite tanks. Um, quite a good looker. That tank is actually a DD, duplex drive. That's why it's got the, what you would probably call a cover around it. It's actually a canvas screen that would pop up so they could float in the water. And one of the comments I've had on that video is, I wonder if the owner has ever took it for a swim. Um, <laughs> I very much doubt that because I think that's the only one that's privately owned. There is one at the Tank Museum that runs, but I think that's a brownie colour, if I'm not wrong. But it's been 10 years since I've been to the Tank Museum and I've never been to Tank Fest, unfortunately. Really good video. That video was the quickest video to make. It took me an hour. Because all that footage is my footage from the Yorkshire wartime experience last year. And to be so close to a tank in general, and, ov and obviously so close to a very, very rare tank and one of your favourite tanks, it is a magical experience. Yes, I shouldn't have been standing that close when it turned, but, um, well... Everybody takes risks in life, don't they, I guess? So, episode one, series four, is made in Australia. That is quite a weird-looking tank, in my opinion. It looks very American, and I believe, looking at the... I think, are they called sprockets? Anyway, the middle wheels, they are off the Renault R35. So, a very odd-looking tank. Quite a fascinating history. They never saw combat. But they were used for training. Obviously, it was there because at the time they thought the Japanese would invade Australia. But there was never plans to invade Australia. The Japanese didn't want to invade Australia. 
and as most of it's barren wasteland, I can't really blame them. There was air attacks though on certain ports, but uh, fortunately never used in combat. It does make you wonder how it would have fared against the little Japanese tanks like the Type 96s. Um, looking at that armour, probably pretty well. Anyway, moving on. HMS During. This was one of the worst videos I've made. One of the most boring videos to put together. And it took me about three hours. But then again, 470 people have watched this video. So you obviously like it. And there's a lot of people who seem to like Victorian vessels especially these little gunboats and torpedo boats um i have no idea why but again it's i guess it's just what people like so i've decided i'm going to do a new video every wednesday or thursday vessels so moving on showman's engine one of my worst videos to edit really boring very little information but the fascinating thing about this video is that that computer graphic that you can see I found that on the internet and that's the same traction engine because when you look through the internet at things that are that old you don't think you're gonna find proper photos of them maybe really grainy black and white pictures that you can use so really nice to find that um, I have two friends I actually have three friends one who owns a real traction engine from the late 1800s he also owns a Forden I think it is I haven't been to his place for two years steam wagon they actually bought from Australia and he's really into it he also has Jaguar e types Austin 7s all that really into it he's even got quite a few French trucks from the 30s that are rusting away which is a shame but I guess he hasn't got time to do them up as well as run his business Kieran and Jack know so much about traction engines and I've been meaning to phone Kieran because he knows he works on them he's he's this guy's mechanic and um, because he knows that much about them and I know virtually nothing about them um, hopefully he can teach me over the summer and then I can do a longer video on I don't know maybe one of his favorite engines or maybe leave it to a vote in the comments sometime in the winter um, I'd like to do a longer video on one of them. I do like the steamroller engines. Whether I can find any information out um, in the books I've got or online about them. Well, we'll just have to see, I guess. 50 people have watched that video. Certainly not the best video that I've done. HMAS Adelaide. Yeah, now you're talking. Not a modern warship by any standards, but this is what I actually want to put to the vote. 1978. Now, I was thinking, let's do the cutoff point in the mid-90s for the channel. Let's not go beyond that, because 90s vehicles are considered modern classics. Probably the newest video I'd do, because I am such a fan of it, would have to be the Scania 164L 4 Series. But would you say, again, difference of opinion do write it in the comments 1978 is that too new or is it still fall within this classic era of vehicles it's down to you really good video to edit had a lot of fun editing that learned so much and because of my australian friends well i just had to do it didn't i um my australian friends love that video and as you can see above that there is the victoria gumboat and Again, that's with the Australian Navy, so I just had to do that one. Anyway, moving on to the Christmas special, the FT-17. Well, it's the first tank with a revolving turret, 1918. Really big fan of this tank. I'd love to sit in a real one. I don't know how many are left. It was quite a long video to make, but really fascinating. I didn't know that Brazil had purchased them in 1921 so that was a really good video to make that I enjoyed it I wish it would have been a bit longer but the problem with that is again there's other channels that have done in-depth videos to do with this tank so I don't really see much point in me doing a really in-depth video that somebody else has covered so moving on to the Yak 40 
2 episode 1 series 5 that was quite an interesting video there is actually some footage in there of the yak 40 nobody seems to have picked up on that yet though so i might have just spilled the beans but absolutely fantastic to make one of my all-time favorite aircraft i thought it would have got a few more views than that and what i didn't realize before this it's my first civilian aircraft video and i will be doing more of them next video it's a video that i found in the archive um not the best video it's not well shot by any means but i did have the camera in my other hand and i was videoing on that at the same time again this is just my opinion but i have been to raf cosford and i've been to tangmere and by far the staff at tangmere want to be there they love chatting to you they trip over the self to tell you about the Gloucester Meteor that broke the world speed record and their other aircraft. They have so much time. Really, really, really nice staff. Really nice staff. RAF Cosford, I went to open cockpits in 2015. It struck me as if the staff did not want to be there. You also try and tell them how much of a fan you are about World War II trucks and your model collection. Um, and I tried to talk to the guy who was the head of the vehicle department about the very rare Fordson Watt 2 dentist truck. And there was just n no feedback there. So in my opinion, um, best aviation museum if you want really friendly staff and want to learn a lot. Definitely tang me, hands down. So the 100 subscriber special, the Northrop video, flying wings fascinating subject aren't they there is a video coming up to do with the yb 49 and on a side note that did not fly in 1949 so it is a bit of a confusing name but really really good looking um ever since i saw the horton brothers flying wing of 1945 i've been hooked and yeah i think it's a very good subject to cover i don't know how many other channels have covered it but um yeah, why not? I would like to develop that into a short series at some point. My favourite video, hands down, my favourite video to research. It took me 10 days to research the Leyland Retriever, so the 200 subscriber special. <sighs> yeah, it was a long road. There's virtually nothing on the internet. There's very little history in the book I've got. And bear in mind, I have about 10 books on wartime trucks, not just World War II. And it really was a sterling effort, but it paid off. I actually had to look on forums and model kit forums, and I usually don't look on them websites. I have no need to. And I'm so glad it was done. And I think what a few of you like, it's a shame it's only got 84 views. I wish it had hundreds of views. But what a few of you definitely like, and I've been told this, it's 11 minutes and 18 seconds. Can you do longer videos? I'd love to see longer videos. But I'll bring that subject up now before we go on to the gunboat. There's a few reasons why I don't do long videos. Number one, it's the information at hand. I can't just magic more information out of thin air. Number two, if you are on your lunch hour, then of course you can watch more than one. And another thing, it puts people off sometimes. If you see a video that you want to watch, you don't really have that much time. Say if there's a video that's 15 minutes on a particular aircraft, you would rather watch one that's 10 minutes or 5 minutes long with loads of information. Then you can either get on with doing what you're doing or you can get on with watching more videos. So that's the advantage of short videos because more people would rather watch shorter videos. That's basically what I'm trying to say. I'll go around all the houses, but that's what I'm trying to say. I'll take the long route. So the gunboat, 1884. Yeah, that was um, quite good, to be honest. If you watched the video, I only had about six photos that I actually laid my hands on. So it was really boring putting it together, but it was fascinating at the same time because... It's the late 1800s. I don't know that much about vessels in general. Certainly not of the late 1800s period. Um, maybe a bit about Tabinia. You look that uh, vessel up. Fascinating how it crashed the Royal Review in the late 1800s off the Isle of Wight. So that was a good video to do. Um, didn't take me long. Probably about two, two and a half hours. 
and my Australian friends like it. So I'm pretty happy with that. So the last video on the channel, obviously before this one, has 5,600 views in two days. How do you work that out? It's a 16 second video. It really does baffle me, but you guys are amazing. Um, how you took 16 seconds out of your day and watched a video that is essentially just saying, hey, there's a video coming tomorrow, one year of the channel. Um, and I think you did that because number one, it shows a very rare Italian fighting vehicle. And number two, you obviously didn't know I had a diecast model room, but it's just one small part of the model room. That's my main wartime collection. I do have two more shells devoted to wartime vehicles, but it's my main one, as in it's the best one. It's got all the unusual stuff on there, not just tanks and trucks. So I'm very glad that there was a lot of views on that one. And keep it up. I think that is a rival to the Hudson video, in my opinion. So something that's probably been on your mind, if you was one of the early subscribers, and this has been on my mind as well, um, one of two things. Number one, why have you left the test videos up? I don't know, I've just never bothered to delete them. Um, there's no answer to that, apart from I never bothered to delete them. They've got some historic uh, vehicles in there, so why not leave them up? See if anyone wants to watch them. And number two, what you'll probably be wondering about, why did you do this? And over the last few days, I've been wondering as well. So, the latest videos say I shot vehicle history and the earlier videos a short history a short history fits the bill of course as in well it is of course a short history it's only three to five minutes long but then a short vehicle history it sounds better you obviously know that it's about a vehicle i mean you obviously know that with the thumbnail but uh, it's, it gives a nice ring to it why i started doing that i have no idea and i'll never have any idea <laughs> But it, it gives a nice ring to it, doesn't it? Um, so anyway, a little bit of information about myself, if you're still watching this video, because it is rather long and boring. So, I'm now 26. I've been researching the war since I was 13. It came about, and if you've seen the comments on the Hudson or on the Valentine, then you'll know. So anyway, it all came about was that when I was 11, my second uncle gave me a DVD of the series The A-Team, very popular series, so I was a big fan of that and I used to watch countless hours of it. But as you'll remember, if you were alive in the 80s, and if you watched it, if you were a fan of that stuff, then there was Dodge Weapons, there was, I think it's called the M49 or M53, tanks from Vietnam. There was also all sorts of wonderful and wacky armoured cars on there and as one gets older you, you get thinking well what are these cars and trucks and then if I know the names I can you know look through a few of my books research because to be honest I have a very extensive book collection of over 300 and counting. So anyway in 2009, I think it was July, there was a program on the Discovery Channel called Days That Shook the World. The trailer was probably about a minute long, but there was a few seconds, and it showed the pilots of Midway gathered on the flight deck, obviously, um, for a photograph, and then it showed their aircraft propellers turning, and of course getting ready for takeoff. And it's all in colour, and I was like, wow, when did when did this take place? What year was this? I've never seen anything like this. Wow, this is old. And in the back of my head was like, when was this? I have to find out, I have to find out. I actually said to my father, I said, oh, what's that about? What's the bit about the pilots? What, do you know anything about it? Well, he's not into his history. He's more into his trucks and motorcycles. And so he turned around to me and he said, it's things that never should have happened that you never should see. Well, as soon as he said never should see, it got me thinking. I was like, well, if you should never see him, why is it on? Well, it's one of the, it's, it's one of them old sayings, isn't it? If somebody tells you not to do it, what do you do next? You go and do it. Probably about a year and a half to find out 
about this battle and who they were and what the aircraft were it turns out they were Hellcat fighters and SBD dive bombers one of my all time favourite aircraft I will be doing a video on that with the help of Sturmvik the game so after that I continue to watch the air team I continue to gather too many war books from and if you're British you'll know this shop it's a really good shop from a bookshop called The Works and it's a cheap bookshop over here um, really good really good value and some awesome titles so from then on what did I do I stopped collecting I stopped collecting truck books I collected World War Two books and I was hooked there was nothing that could get me away from the vehicles I was like I have to find out what these are so anyway it's cut a very long story short because I'm sure you don't have much more time best series of the decade I believe it first aired in September 2009 I've got the box set on the wardrobe and it's called World War Two in color and HD I don't know how long it took them to convert the footage into colour. I don't know how long it took them to research. It had voiceover actors. It had Shermans. Everything were in colour. The Winter War, of course. Um, the Eastern Front. And I was just hooked. I was I was like, six weeks before it came on, I was saying to Father, I've got to watch this. I've got to watch this. Just the trailer alone was like a kid in a candy store for me that's what moment it was like there was panthers there was tigers there was hitler's g4 mercedes there was battles like the second battle of alamein arnhem everything just exploded and i was like i have this is my favorite subject i have to research this i have to learn as much as possible um maybe even become a historian one day well to be a proper historian it's 10 years at college to get your PhD. But as the old saying goes again, it's not what you know, it's who you know. Unfortunately, I don't know anyone in the um, telecommunications industry or anyone to do with the local college. So that's a shame. So for now, my knowledge is confined to YouTube, but I don't mind because you guys seem to like it. So then I started collecting models of world war ii vehicles um my first one i believe was a dinky bedford ql in november of 2010 from the seaside town hopefully i've said this correctly of ross on sea in north wales and that actually came from the local cafe and he used to sell dinkies in the until about 2018 so yeah fascinating days um then my model collection exploded because i would say over half of the collection is devoted to World War II vehicles and fire trucks, and that's an idea. I could do a video about the history of fire trucks or something like that, maybe Seagrave or Pierce. That's another story. Um, many more videos to come this year. So to be honest, yeah, it's been um, a long road yet, and that's and that's the title of my book series. Um, but then if I tell you about that, the video is going to get longer, so I'm not going to do that today. Um, what I will tell you is I did promise a video every weekend, and that's still happening. But in April, the vehicle shows start up, and sometimes I do go on the Saturday and Sunday, depending where they're located. I'm going to go to night school for me maths, which is going to help with the photography class, and... A lot of you don't know I do this. I did stop two years ago because of the world has been in turmoil, but I'm going to restart this year. I'm actually having flying lessons in light aircraft. I wanted to bring you a couple of seconds of video of that, but I can't locate the Cessna video from two years ago. Don't know why. So I'll put in these shots that I took off the phone last year. And of course, maths really does help in the air when you have to do calculations with your fuel and how much fuel do you have. When do you have to put fuel from your reserve tanks into your wing tanks? So maths really does go a long way. I was shit at maths in school. And like a lot of people, I couldn't do maths. I hated maths. And having um, mild dyslexia doesn't help with maths. So 
I think I'll probably be there sitting at the desk this year. All right, <clears throat> what vehicle video can I do next? Because I'll be that bored. So probably not my wisest choice. Then I've got uh, photography school to go to. I've had a camera in my hand since I was seven, but to have the best cameras, which are the DSLRs, I have to truly know how to work one. So instead of just um, going along with the bridge camera and learning as I go, I want to properly know all about this camera and how to work it to get the best out of it because these cameras are not cheap. In the comment sections, I've really enjoyed them. I enjoy replying to comments, so when my videos don't get comments, I'm not disappointed, but it, it gives you something to talk about rather than just make videos. Um, there was one comment and I think it was on the HE59 video and I do I am with this guy 100% what he says I need to slow my voice down on the videos that's actually just editing work alright so I will speak to you on Wednesday or Thursday it will be another watercraft video I am planning to do one of the hovercraft. I did go on it at Portsmouth last year, so I am going to do one of them. Um, also, one quick thing. The Bolt and Paul Defiant video that Josh Jones voted to be the next video. It's not going to be the next video. I did promise that, but I found a book on eBay, a really cheap book, to do with the definitive history. Because all I know about the Defiant is, one, it served in the Battle of Britain. Two... It had no forward firing machine guns. Three, it got shot down a lot. And four, it was very successful as a night fighter. So I need a bit more than that to put in the video. Else it will be the shortest video I've ever done. Fingers crossed, in a few weeks, we can put it to the vote. And you can vote for the next video. Hopefully that's a regular feature. So anyway, uh, hopefully you all enjoyed this very boring video of me ranting on. Okay, well, I will speak to you on Wednesday or Thursday. Have a good one. Ta-da.